Hello brothers and sisters, Brother John here and today we're going to talk about the fourth seal. I've heard countless Christians hold to this view that two billion people are going to die at the fourth seal. So today we're going to examine their claim and we're going to see if it's scripturally correct or if it's just man adding their interpretation to what the scriptures actually say. Because man is known to twist the scriptures by interpreting them incorrectly to fit their own personal views. So first off, what does the King James Version say about the fourth seal? It says this, And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. Now does it say anywhere here that one-fourth of mankind was killed? Or does it say that they were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill? Because that is a big difference. You can have power over a fourth part of the earth to kill with war and with famine, and that doesn't mean that everyone will die, nor is it what the scriptures say. It's just man adding their own interpretation and twisting the scripture to fit their own end time views. They want to make the fourth seal seem so terrible that it must be God's wrath because two billion people are going to immediately die at the fourth seal when the truth is the Bible does not say that. In fact, if you notice, that verse makes no mention that one fourth of the earth was killed. Only that they were given power over one-fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, which is war, and also can include murder and mass shootings, suicide, etc. The sword is a weapon, and weapons are used to kill. I read in an article today from a university that quoted the United Nations Secretary General, and he said, and I quote, Two billion people, or a quarter of the world's population, now lives in conflict-affected areas according to the United Nations. I'll leave a link to this article in the description and I'll also leave a link to the death tolls that are caused by famine, wars, and pandemics over the last 2,000 years. And if you tally up those numbers, you'll see that over 2 billion people have died over the past 2,000 years from wars, from famines, and from pestilences. This is the power that was given to the fourth horse rider of the pale horse. So the UN Secretary General stated that 2 billion people are currently living in conflict affected areas. If that's not prophetic, I do not know what is. That's one fourth of the earth that is right now under the power of the pale horse rider which brings the sword and famine. The sword being war and conflicts. I believe this to be the pale horse rider on display right in front of the world's eyes, yet folks are asleep. They don't want to see it because it doesn't fit their Revelation 4 rapture theory that they call sound doctrine, so they have to ignore the facts that over 2 billion people have died by famine, pestilences, and wars over the past 2,000 years. And there is nothing sound about a Revelation chapter 4 rapture. It's more like they're living in denial with their heads in the sand. They have to speculate that John is the church, and they have to speculate that the 24 elders are the church as well. And they call their speculation sound doctrine, when in reality it's just man's interpretation. And when man interprets scriptures, there is a highly likely chance that their interpretation is incorrect. And for this very reason, I don't like to go by the interpretations of men, especially in the book of Revelation. Because the book literally tells us when the wrath comes, but folks will deny the literal word and rather would go by men's interpretation instead of the literal word. So they have to say that John is the church and he gets called up to heaven and then all of a sudden there are now 24 elders and that's the church. And nowhere in the scripture does the Bible teach this. This is not sound doctrine. It is the interpretation of man. None of the early church fathers ever mentioned John being the church or the 24 elders being the church. As a matter of fact, many scholars even argue that the 24 elders represent the 12 tribes of Israel combined with the 12 apostles representing how God has bridged the gap between the Old Covenant 
and the new covenant. And the fact that there are 24 names written on New Jerusalem, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb, and also the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's your 24 elders. Their names are written on the gates and on the foundation of the walls of New Jerusalem. This directly links them to the number 24 and they are elders because they're the first of the children of Israel and they're the first of the church. They are the 24 elders. To say that the 24 elders are the church is a desperate attempt to try to put the rapture before any of the birth pangs and before any tribulation or affliction or trouble comes. And I'm not talking about the great tribulation, which is God's wrath. We're not appointed to that. What I'm talking about is the tribulation that Jesus said we would have in this world. And every generation has had it. Every single person that's ever been born has experienced this tribulation. And for this very reason, Jesus said we would have tribulation in this world, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So we are supposed to have tribulation. Every generation has experienced tribulation. The tribulation is simply birth pangs. And that is what the first five seals are. They're the birth pangs before the woman gives birth at the sixth seal. So to answer the question, does the Bible say that two billion people are going to suddenly die at the fourth seal? Absolutely not. This is ridiculous. And this is man misinterpreting the scripture and they're adding their own theories to what is not written to fit their own end time views. For example, let's just say that their theory is correct and two billion people die at the fourth seal. That means that the fourth seal is worse than the fifth seal and it's worse than the first trumpet. It's worse than the second trumpet and the third trumpet and the fourth trumpet. So do you see that when it comes to the judgments, they get increasingly worse with each judgment. Okay, so how is it that the fourth seal judgment can be worse than the trumpet judgments? It makes absolutely no sense at all. When in fact, the judgments get increasingly worse and worse as they progress with time. They don't go from worse to better. It doesn't go from the fourth seal, two billion people die, to the fifth seal, oh, you know, only a few people die. No, no, it gets worse and worse and worse. It progressively gets worse. But folks that say this, they have an agenda. Their agenda is to make the fourth seal sound horrible so that way folks could believe that it's God's wrath, when in fact it's not God's wrath. This has been going on for thousands of years. As I mentioned, over two billion people have died from famine, pestilences, and wars over the past 2,000 years. This writer has been writing for a very long time. Folks just don't realize it. But so many Christians believe this, and I think that they want to hear the smooth things. They want to hear what their itching ears want to hear. They don't want to hear anything about going through any type of tribulation because they say that the church is not appointed to the tribulation. When the Bible says that we're not appointed to the wrath, but we are appointed to tribulation. Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation. But it's not the great tribulation. It's only tribulation, which is just the birth pangs. I understand that what I'm saying is not the smooth things that folks want to hear. That the rapture happens at the fourth chapter. And that we're not going to have to experience any type of affliction or trouble. But that's not what the Bible says. Listen, I believe that the church is going to be raptured before God's wrath comes, okay? But I believe that the Bible makes it clear that God's wrath comes at the sixth seal and not before, because that's what the scriptures say. And I rely on the scriptures and not man's interpretation. And I cannot ignore all the pain and the suffering that has been going on all over the world for the past 2,000 years until the present day. I cannot keep my head in the sand and to say that the first five seals haven't been opened when we could see the effects of these seals every single day on the news. I turn on the world news and what do I see? There's famines in Africa, there's Christians being killed in the Middle East and all these different parts of the world and there's all these conflicts and struggles and wars and rumors of wars and to me it's, it's clear this is what 
is going to lead up to the great tribulation. It's going to lead up to the opening of the sixth seal when we get raptured out of here. But to ignore everything, all of the tribulation, all of the suffering, all of the troubles that are going on, it's living in denial. It's not reality. I understand that most folks that are teaching end times prophecy teach that there is no tribulation in the book of Revelation for the church. And that it's going to be all roses and flowers until the rapture comes. But there is a difference between tribulation and wrath. And we're not appointed to the wrath. We are appointed to tribulation. And the first five seals are not God's wrath. Okay, these writers have been writing for thousands of years now. And we can clearly see the evidence of that. Look at the death tolls. Billions of people have died from famines, wars, and pestilences. The book of Revelation is about the past, the present, and the future. John wrote about the things that are, the things that have been, and the things that are to come. The first five seals are the things that have been and are. And folks that cannot see this, they have to get their heads out of the sand. They're not living in reality. They are looking at things from a small box of their own lives. They read the seals and they say to themselves, I'm not experiencing any war or famine or pestilence. I don't have to work all day just to eat any food. I live in a rich country. I'm going to ignore all the suffering that's going on on a fourth part of the world. As long as I'm not experiencing any famine or war, I don't have to work all day for a loaf of bread, then I'm good. And these seals have not been opened. I'm just going to continue to ignore all the things going on in the world and I'm going to keep my head in the sand la 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 when reality is that there's always been wars and famines and pestilences over a fourth part of the earth there's always been poor people and at least a fourth part of the earth is suffering from inequality the rich are not affected from this but only the poor having to work all day just for the bare necessities just to eat and the book says that the majority of folks will not feel this birth pain because it's only on a fourth part of the earth. So if you're living in a rich country, it's likely you'll never even experience this birth pain at all. Sure, we may experience minor inflation, but imagine the poor people. It's a hundred times worse for them. But holding on to the fourth chapter rapture, you have to ignore all the birth pangs and sufferings of the world. And Christians have been getting killed and slaughtered for the testimony of the Word of God for nearly 2,000 years now. And they have to ignore this as well. And it's not reality. It's denial. And again, notice that the fourth seal is only on a fourth part of the earth, meaning that the majority of the earth will not experience these birth pangs firsthand, but only a fourth part. And this is the reason why you have to watch the world news to know what's going on in the whole world. All these birth pangs are not just going to be where you're geographically located in your state or whatever. It's sporadically all over the world. And most of these judgments are happening in the poor countries. Where there's suffering, where there's inequality, where there's wars and famines. But nowhere does it say that a fourth part of the earth is going to be killed instantly at the opening of the fourth seal. That is ridiculous. That is taking scripture out of context. And that is misinterpreting the scriptures. And, and quite frankly, it's abusing the scriptures. You're adding your own interpretation to what is not written there. For example, in Revelation chapter 9 verse 18, this is the sixth trumpet. And it says... By these three was a third part of men killed, by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. Notice here it literally says, and I quote, was the third part of men killed. It literally says a third part of men were killed. Okay, that's the sixth trumpet. Do you see the difference between the sixth trumpet and the fourth seal? Again, the Bible literally interprets itself. You don't need to add the interpretation of men to scripture. The fourth seal does not say that one fourth of mankind is killed. It does not say a fourth of men were killed at the fourth seal. That's a huge difference. Why then do Christians keep insisting that two billion die at the fourth seal when that's not what the scriptures say? I repeat, it says this about the fourth seal. 
Power was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. It doesn't say anywhere that a fourth of mankind was killed, only that power was given to them over the fourth part of the earth. And the fact that when these folks die, they go to hell, this shows us that this judgment is not for Christians, but for the unbelievers. And how do I know this? Because death and hell has no power over Christians because of the blood of the Lamb. We have the victory over death and hell in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So the fourth seal is on those that reject the gospel of Christ. When they die, they go to hell. So they experience death and then hell follows because they were not saved. Another example is the world elites. They get together every single year, going to their events like Davos, etc., where they scheme wicked plans on the earth, and they have power through their money and influence, and the fact that they own every single major corporation and business, they have power over a fourth of the earth to kill with war, famine, and pestilence, and the beasts of the earth. They plan out all the wars in advance. They create these pandemics. And they fund the projects that create chaos on the earth. And they fund the WHO. And they have power over the UN. And they fund all the projects that create these viruses in labs. And most of these viruses come from the beast of the earth. Like mosquitoes that are responsible for around millions of deaths per year. And bats that are known for spreading viruses that have killed hundreds of millions of people. And many other animals like birds, etc. have spread diseases, flus, and many other viruses that have killed billions of people since the time of Adam. So yes, death from the beast of the earth has been fulfilled and is still present to this very day. And it is still actively being fulfilled. So the fourth seal is war, famine, and pestilence from the beast of the earth. And yes, one-fourth of the earth has been plagued by war, famine, and death for thousands of years. I believe with all of my heart that this seal has been opened for thousands of years now. Don't take my word for it. I encourage every single one of you to research this matter for yourselves. Find out how many wars have been fought over the last 2,000 years. Find out how many people have been murdered over the last 2,000 years. Find out how many people have died from famines all around the world over the last 2,000 years. And find out how many plagues and viruses that there have been over the last 2,000 years. Do a death tally including all these that I just mentioned. Not to mention all of the gang violence and drug wars and murders and abortions and mass shootings. I tell you, the number will astonish you. And you won't have to ask yourself if the fourth seal has been opened because you will know by the number of deaths that the pale horse rider has been given power over a fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with famine and with pestilences and with the beast of the earth for thousands of years already. The first five seals are all common things we see every single day if we're watching the global news. Christians are being martyred every single day in different parts of the world. Death and famine and pestilence is a common theme. There is nothing new under the sun. The only one thing that we have not yet seen is the sun turn to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes and the stars of heaven falling to the earth and the Son of Man coming to gather the church to himself at the rapture of the church. And I believe that this happens at the sixth seal. At the same time, the wrath comes down. We get caught up. And then fire comes down from heaven at the first trumpet blast, just as it was in the days of Lot. The same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained down fire and brimstone from heaven. And you see the great multitude from every nation, from every language that is without number for the first time in heaven at the sixth seal in Revelation chapter 8, before any of the seven trumpet judgments of God's wrath, before any of the seven bowls of God's wrath. God's wrath is supernatural. 
and the seals are all natural and common everyday things that we see on the news every single day. And this is why it's important to rightly divide the word of God because when you rightly divide, you could see that these seals are not supernatural. They're just natural. And the seven trumpets and the seven bowls are supernatural. And this is the reason why the word wrath divides the supernatural from the natural in the book of Revelation. The first time the word wrath is used is at the sixth seal. And after that, all you see is supernatural. And before the word wrath is used, all you see is natural. And this is why it's important that we share the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who lived a perfect and sinless life, being the Lamb of God without blemish. He willingly laid down his life for our sins. He was buried and he rose again on the third day and was witnessed alive by all of his disciples and by over 500 brothers and sisters at one time. And most of the witnesses were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And I believe that these witnesses are part of the souls that are right now under the altar in heaven that cry out to our Lord saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I believe that this little season is the church age. And once this church age of grace is up, then that's when God's wrath comes and he's going to avenge the death of all of the Christians that were killed over the last 2,000 years of the church age of grace. And I believe that they are waiting in heaven today for the time of God's wrath, also known as the Great Tribulation, which begins at the sixth seal, which is the same time that we go up. It's our Red Sea moment. When the wrath comes down, we go up because we are not appointed to God's wrath, but to obtain salvation from our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. But the first five seals are not his wrath. The scriptures are clear about that. They are the birth pangs that lead up to the birth that happens at the sixth seal. And we see this in Revelation chapter 12. The woman is pregnant and she does not give birth to the child until the stars of heaven fall to the earth. Then she gives birth. Those same stars of heaven fall at the opening of the sixth seal. This is not a coincidence. This is why I say that blood moons are high watch days. Because the moon will turn to blood at the sixth seal. And the prophet Joel says this happens before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. It's going to be great for those that are saved. And it's going to be terrible for those that are not saved and get left behind during the great tribulation. The next blood moon is going to be on November 8th of this year. And this is a high watch day for sure. If we're still here after all of the fall feast, then this is going to be the next highest watch day for sure. That's all for now, brothers and sisters. I love you all, and God bless you all, and Maranatha.